So let's talk about this mushroom. Wow. And you can see I kind of messed it up a little bit carrying it around, but you can see how that could be mistaken for a pheasant back. That's what it's called, pheasant back. In other parts of the country, some people call them dryads saddle. Hmm. Dryad, a dryad in Greek mythology is a spirit of a tree. And sometimes that spirit takes the form of a beautiful woman. Are you a dryad? I should know all this. I'm Greek. I knew that. How about that? <laughs> to me, it's a pheasant bag. Some people call them pheasant tail. And they're delicious. They're delicious. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this one. Now, if you want to see what it looks like on the inside, you can see it's nice and white. And yummy. Underneath, it, you can see those pores. Mm -hmm. Now, this is still nice and tender. Some people scrape those pores off. I'm not going to do that. Some people peel this, as you can see, you could peel that off. Yeah. If you wanted to do that. I don't see any reason to do that. I've eaten these before and I've always left that on. I like it all too. Now, if it's a little bit dry, this is a little bit bigger and we're going to cut off a little bit of this outside. Of see if you can feel that. See how dry that is? Yeah. It's starting to dry out. So I'm going to cut off around those edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these into strips. And we're going to put this in our recipe. Oh, good. I'm someone can take my little ulu knife. I'm going to cut these into strips. Now, it depends on how you want them cut up. If you want big pieces. Now, if you did want to remove that, there's several ways to do it. That bottom porous part, you can just scrape it off like such. Oh, wow. If you choose right to do up, that. Yeah. Now, we got some shiitake mushrooms, which we're going to add as well. Now, obviously, a lot of us aren't going to have a pheasant back mushroom growing in our backyard or woods. And if that's the case, you can use any kind of mushroom you want. You can use shiitake, you can use oyster, whatever you want. And if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to use mushrooms. If you wanted to do something different here, you could use some small carrots. Good idea. Some okay. people don't like mushrooms. Use some small carrots, some small potatoes, and you could do that. We're going to take our garlic mustard along with our bouquet garni, and we're going to put that in there. Now, some people may think, why are you trying to be all fancy? That's the last thing we're trying to do. We're not trying to impress anybody. The only thing that I'm trying to impress is your taste buds mm -hmm. and your taste buds. When you step outside your comfort zone and you start exploring the world of cooking, you find mm -hmm. out, wow, what does this do yeah. over here? When I met Raul, he blew my mind. A French chef started introducing all of these things that I use today. Today, we're gonna have some, some beef stock and we're gonna have some currant jelly. Where have you seen that? Mm -hmm. Almost any time that right. we use beef or venison, we use current jelly red wine and a beef stock. Mm -hmm. Now, some folks, they use stuff like this every day. Beginners, so maybe more of a salt and pepper garlic type, mm -hmm. thinking, what, why is he doing all this stuff trying to be hooty tooty? We're using fire and charcoal. Very, very basic setup. Mm -hmm. Fire and iron and food. Right. It's that simple. So we're making something taste very good with natural items that are just absolutely wonderful. We're not trying to be fancy. We're trying to impress your taste buds. Right. Not you or your buddies, but you and your taste buds. Preheating our oven. Okay. Now you do not have to cook this outside. You can cook this inside if you'll hold this. You just enjoy it. I love cooking outside. If you'll pour me some in there. All right, how much would you like? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect. Right. Heat is heat. So now you see that fat? I want that fat. Good stuff. That fat does not bother me at all. This is a chuck roast. Now whether you raise it or buy it from the store, I saw them on sale the other day. Watch out for chuck roasts when they're on sale because you can do so many things with it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut out about, I don't know, a couple pounds anyway. Cut it in bite sized pieces. They're going to shrink up just a little bit when I brown them. We've preheated our oven. Our Dutch oven. Like our oven. It's a heat source, mm -hmm. just like your oven inside. You can do this in a crock pot. Of course, you'd have to cook a lot longer. Right. This is about an hour and a half recipe. Let's see if we get a snizzle. Ooh. All right. So we're going to brown our beef 350 degrees when you're preheating your pan or keeping 350 degree temperature inside of a, of a Dutch oven outdoors on a 12 inch is 17 on the top eight on the bottom. Remember that, I try to remember that it equals 25. Okay. Obviously you'll want more on the top than the bottom because of spacing. And we're gonna do a little stacking tonight because we're making some bread as well. So what have we got, Mrs. Farmer? We've got beef mm -hmm. and we've got mushrooms. What could we possibly do with that? I don't know, what could we do with that? I think How about 
some beef and mushrooms over mashed potatoes. Ooh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like my mashed potatoes. And I'm just gonna lightly brown these. As you know, it's gonna cook for another hour and a half out here. All right, I browned my meat. I'm coming back with my onions. All right, so our onions, I think, are sufficiently browned. Now, with our butcher's twine, if you would take our parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Yes. Have you heard that song? No, yes, I have. <laughs> that song, now, not the one that was written in the 60s. That is actually the actual Scarborough Fair song. It's hundreds of years old. Okay. And the Scarborough Fair has been going on since the 1400s. Okay. So parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Now, you can remember that from the song. So many dishes, so many dishes can work well with this, especially a beef dish. Alrighty. So if you'll take me some parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. I will. Thyme together. I remember the first time I cooked with red wine. It's probably 30 years ago. Now, if you don't drink wine or don't believe in drinking wine, know this, that your alcohol content is minute once this cooks down. But the flavor is amazing. The flavor is absolutely amazing. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna say 24 ounces of beef broth. And I'm gonna add some currant jelly. Now that's gonna give us the sweet versus the salty and the tart, and everything that we're gonna do in here. At this point as well, I'm also gonna add some salt and pepper to taste. Take a little bit of beef bouillon. I'm gonna get some salt content from there as well. And I'm gonna say, that's about two teaspoons. So that combination, remember that, the red wine, the currant jelly, you've seen it before and you'll see it again, work in a whole lot of recipes. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil. Now I'm gonna take about four cloves of garlic. We're putting those in a hole. And Kelly will probably eat those just like that when they come out. All right, at this point, we're gonna put in our mushrooms. Pheasant back mushroom. And I'm gonna take some shiitake as well. And if I had to guess, it's about three quarters of a cup of each. And then I'm gonna put our beef back in here. We're gonna take some of our garlic mustard and our parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And then we're gonna turn the heat up. How do you turn the heat up? We put the top on. Remember, that's eight on the bottom, 17 on the top. I'll check on this real quick. Oh, it's looking good. At this point, I'm gonna take out my bouquet garni. And you see what I got here? Oh, I wish you could smell this. Everything's tender. It's all cooked together. It smells right, if you know what I mean. At this point, I'm gonna take some cornstarch, equal parts cornstarch and water. And I'm gonna pour in here and just thicken that up. Thicken it up till it looks right. And we're gonna put that over our mashed potatoes and have us some kind of dinner. All right, we got good bread. Mrs. Farmer, I want you to try that and see what you think. Mm-hmm, really good. That mushroom was sitting on the side of a tree yesterday. We rescued it and made it famous. Really good, we need to find more mushrooms. I like this. Hmm. Mm. delicious. Mm. Delicious. Meat's nice and tender. Mm-hmm. It's really, it's delicious, it's tender. Your mushrooms are tasty, I love it. 